One thing that we can look at in units on circles is to take a look at what are called tangent lines. Now tangent lines, as shown in the diagram here, are a line, line segment or ray, that just barely come into contact with the edge of a circle. Now a tangent line will allow us to do many things. Uh, we've talked in the past about being able to inscribe a shape or circumscribe to be able to place an item inside or just outside of a circle and the tangent lines are what make that possible. This location where the line, segment, or ray impacts the circle is called the point of tangency and the line itself is, the, is tangent to the circle. Now this concept of tangent is going to have effect when we start looking at the definition of what exactly is a tangent function in trigonometric ratios, but that's normally a discussion that's reserved for higher levels of mathematics. Let's begin looking at tangent lines or tangents with theorem 12.1. This one states, if a line is tangent to a circle, then is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at the point of tangency. So if I were to come up here and take a radius of this circle, as best I can, it would be perpendicular to this tangent. And that's going to have a lot of effect. Now, most of the theorems we're going to talk about in this lesson, their converses are also true, making them biconditional statements. I'm going to talk about the main theorem itself, just understand that the converse will come with it. So let's begin looking at What angles can we use, or how can we use this idea of tangency to find missing angles in triangles. Well, in the diagrams that are shown here, because we have line segments that are tangent, we know that we have right angles. And I'm going to mark this on both diagrams. Well, knowing our triangle angle sum theorems, we can use that to help find missing side lengths. So 38 degrees plus the measure of angle D, plus the measure of angle E, which is X, have to equal 180. Measure of angle D is 90. 90 plus 38 is 128. So 128 degrees plus X equals 180 degrees. Subtraction property of equality tells me I can subtract 128 degrees from both sides, which means that X is equal to 58 degrees. Next, the kite that's shown on the right. And we know it's a kite by a couple items that will come at a later time during this lesson. We have two 90 degree angles and a 117 degree angle. So the measure of angle O plus the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle N plus the measure of angle M would have to equal 360. Going through and using some substitutions, 117 degrees plus 90 plus 90 plus x equals 360. 90 and 90 make 180. 180 plus 117 is 297 degrees plus x equals 360 degrees. Subtracting the 297 degrees from both sides, using my subtraction property of equality, we come out with x equaling 63 degrees. So with very little information, just knowing this relationship, we can find quite a bit. But how can we apply this? Let's take a look at one. The picture, the building shown in the picture here, is the Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, the stratosphere has an observation platform about 250 meters above the ground. On top of that is a small uh, thrill ride park where you have rides that will hang you out over the city of Las Vegas. But from the top of this tower, what would be the distance you could see out into the Earth? Well, the way we can take a look at this is if we have the Earth here, very crude drawing, granted, and from the center, we have a radius coming out, then we have another radius, 
on top of which is stratosphere tower. And what we want to do is find out the distance you can see from stratosphere out into the Earth. Now the Earth has a radius of roughly 6,400 kilometers, and stratosphere at 250 meters is a quarter of a kilometer. Now taking this information, we would be able to calculate using the Pythagorean theorem and applying the proper side relationships. What we have here is a right triangle with one leg, this leg here, having a distance of 6,400 kilometers. We don't know the, how far we can see, which is our other leg, and that is equal to the 6,400 and a quarter kilometers that Stratus Tower sits above the center of the Earth. Now going through and running some computations on this, what we have is x squared is equal to 6,400 and a quarter squared minus 6,400 squared. Now these numbers tend to be a bit large. x squared is going to equal 6,400 and a quarter squared, which is 40,963,200 and 6 one hundredths. And then 6,400 squared is 40,960,000 uh, kilometers. So going through and subtracting, x squared will equal 3,200 and 6 one hundredths. Then taking the square root of this figure gives us that the distance we can see out from the top of that observation platform to be approximately 56.6 .6 kilometers. So you can do some minor computations and find some pretty interesting information. The higher up you go, the more you'd be able to see around the curvature of the Earth before things fall back into place. Now how would this work in a more general setting of what we see in this diagram on the right? Well, we can see that we have that right angle, so this line is tangent, and then we can find out our other pieces. So we would have x squared plus 10 squared is equal to that hypotenuse x plus 6 squared. Now combine, uh, simplifying this out, we have x squared plus 100 equals a binomial x plus 6 when we square it comes out with x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now subtraction property of equality, I can subtract x squared from both sides, leaving me with 100 equals 12x plus 36. Subtracting 36 from both sides gives me 64 is equal to 12x. Now, division property of equality tells me that I can divide both sides of this by that 12, and I get x is equal to about 5 and a third, or 16 thirds, whichever you'd prefer. We'll go 16 thirds, which is the same as 5 and 1 third. So the radius of this circle is 5 and 1 third units. Now along with the theorem we've already had, there are a couple others that come into play. Let's take a look at them. Theorem 12.2 states, if a line in the plane of a circle is perpendicular to the radius at its end point on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. This is that converse that we had spoken of, and we just used it in the last example that was worked out. Now theorem 12.3 also goes back to something that we had looked at a little bit previous. It states, if two tangent segments of a circle share a common endpoint outside of the circle, then the two segments are congruent. This is what allowed us to 
state that that uh, shape in the first set of examples was a rhombus. So how can we use that in the diagram that is shown here in order to find missing side lengths? So as you can see, we have circle O, which is inscribed inside of this triangle, triangle PQR, and we have a couple of line segments that are denoted out. Now if we know that the perimeter of this triangle PQR is 88 centimeters, let's find the lengths of all segments of the shape. So using theorem 12.3 here, we know that PX is 15 centimeters. That means that PZ will also be the same 15 centimeters. In a similar idea, if RZ is 17, using theorem 12.3, RY will also be 17 centimeters. So what do we have so far? We have 88 centimeters. The perimeter is equal to 2 times 15 plus 2 times 17 plus 2 times this unknown value x. Simplifying, we have 88 is equal to 30 plus 34 plus 2x. 30 plus 34 is 64 plus 2x. Subtraction property of equality tells me that 24 is equal to 2x, meaning that x is equal to 12. So each of these missing side lengths is 12 centimeters in length. So Tangents are a good place to start when we're looking at the ideas surrounding a circle, and we'll use them as we go forward. Next up, we're going to be talking about chords.